Hi guys, Elias is here. I'm a senior solutions architect and this series is an attempt to answer your questions about what tools do solutions architects use to fulfill their job requirements. Tools that I might be using and tools that other SAs might be using as well. And today we talk about how to build and maintain APIs you will enjoy working on. But before jumping into this episode, make sure to watch the first episode where I demoed XMind, my favorite mind mapping software, and how I use it to build non-functional requirements, roadmaps, and other charts I use in my daily job. And now onto the second tool that enables me and a lot of my SA colleagues to efficiently develop quality APIs with collaborative API-first design, Stoplight. Yes, you heard it right, Stoplight, not to be confused with Spotlight. He was actually a principal architect and a friend of mine, Mario Bittencourt, who introduced me to this tool. My name is Mario Bittencourt. I am an electronic engineer by trade and I've been working currently with Essence as a principal uh, software architect for the past or a year and a half. Essence is a multi-brand retailer based in Montreal. It is one, if not the largest retailer in the world, specializing in sale of designer fashion and high-end streetwear. Now, I'm gonna be honest. When Mario introduced me to Stoplight, I had not used it before. And that's why I delayed this episode for a few weeks so I can get the chance to actually use it firsthand in a professional environment. We'll ask Mario later about how he uses Stoplight in his day-to-day -day tasks and walk us through its features and what makes it unique among today's competition. But first, I was curious as to why he chose a tool like Stoplight to begin with. I wanted to really break away from something that it's a valid approach but I, I'm not super fond of, which is for the developers to embed some documentation style tags in their APIs and automatically generate the, the, the in this case, Swagger open API documentation based on the code. As a developer experience, this usually creates some, well, artifacts on your code that are those huge comments that you have to rewrite really using just your standard, you know, IDE. There's no support uh, for features that you have to remember. What's the syntax when I want to describe the servers or the uh, op optional parameters and so on? See, Mario believes that using a tool like Swagger defeats the purpose of writing a clear documentation first before actually writing the code. But that's not all. As software engineers, we think of writing documentation as a, uh, as a good practice, but Mario highlights where this practice can easily become an anti-pattern if not handled correctly. Point goes back to the fact that you still have to write the documentation by hand using a tool that does not necessarily help you for that. You, you know, like it tries to infer that situation. And since there are still documents that you have to manually maintain yourself, I'd say, well, why not use a tool that provides some, a lot of functionality, like in a visual way, because anyone that has, uh, you know, tried to written an, an open API by hand knows that, well, take some time to get used to the syntax, what are the keywords and, and all that. So stop like for me kind of packages this in a nice way. Now, we agree there are a few interesting solutions out there, um, IDEs, plugins, and language constructs that take a stab at this specific problem, and each one use a different approach to solve it. Keep in mind, Stoplight is a free tool, and I should probably also mention that this video is not sponsored by Stoplight, or anyone for that matter. And if it was the case, I'll just make sure to clearly indicate it. This whole series is but an attempt to answer your questions about what tools do solutions architects use to fulfill their job. So it might look like I'm selling a tool, but I'm just talking about how I use it pretty much. So as I was saying, Stoplight brings an intuitive interface through its web version that can also be run locally, you know, uh, completely offline. It is also multi-platform and... It's really visual. So in this particular example, right? So I, I have a, a path for, you know, getting and uh, placing orders. And essentially you can go and say, well, I have this get option here and you can add your description, right? Get the order by 
its ID and provide whatever information you want. Uh, do I have to pass any specific header or uh, you know a query parameter? I don't know, uh, what kind of cookies do you want? So it allows you to, to create this and, and on the response side, you can add as many responses. Let's say I wanna have an actual 404 not found. So you can add the responses and imagine in the response, you would have an object that would say, well, I have an execution ID that's a string. You'd have, I don't know, maybe a message associated with that. So you, you can create examples out of this automatically. So you use the tool to keep enhancing what you want to design very quickly. And behind the scenes, it's actually generating the entire uh, open APIs. All right, now let's pause here and imagine you had to write all this code by yourself. Even with the help of whatever plugins your IDE might provide, it would still be a tough pill to swallow. Now, we've seen how we can write the spec for a simple get. So I have asked Mario to walk us through another example, this time using the post method. I'm going to place an order. I'm just passing a SKU and a quantity. As you add elements here, when you click on the example, it already pre-fills to you. So in my example here, I create this queue, which is a string and a quantity that's a number. And here on the properties, I said that the minimum number is one, the maximum is 10. So when I go here on this example, you see that it already put one here as the minimum value because it knows what you're looking for. Now that's interesting. The engine is working with you as you define your API and trying to offer useful information wherever it can, like generating IDs automatically or generating a random string when it detects that you are using a string as a key. The other interesting piece of this to me was the reusability aspect. Can I use the schema I create across APIs? And can I link them together so that if I update my schema in one place, it propagates to all the other APIs? Whenever I'm placing an order on the 200 response, I created prior here a response called order created. So if I click here, this order created has, in this case, just the ID of the object. And you see that if you go here, I say that the format is UID, so even the example it already suggests something for you. And if I come back here to my orders, especially to the post, I can reference to that response. So I don't have to write the same thing two or three times and at the same uh, situation. If I have to update, I update just once. If you are familiar with OpenAPI, you know that you can define servers. You can have, uh, for example, a QA server, a staging, prod, and so on. Well, it turns out that Stoplight integrates with another open source tool made by the same company to run mocks. And this tool is called Prism. In this case, when I hit try, I added one server, which is the mock server. If I go here in mocks, you're going to see that it creates mock servers for us, the situation is 3104, 3104. So if I go here, I can click send and it will call itself and return a mock to that response. So let me go here to the get, send it again. And as you can see, my, my response, if I go here to the get on the response, I have, well, it's going to return an array of objects and each object's a string and a number, but I don't like, let's put a minimum of one, right? So if I call here working-ish, so you see that it at least returns the information in the format that I have, still not perfect as you see, but at least allows two things in my opinion. One, you don't have to worry about writing the thing yourself. Two, once you create this open API, you can 
ship that open API spec to your clients that are going to. And with a tool like Prism, you can actually mock the interaction that you will have with that API, effectively unblocking them from doing their development with you. Uh, this kind of you know quick feedback loop that you always want to have in this situation where we have multiple teams working with multiple services and, and so on. At this point, I thanked Mario for his time and patience. And by the way, if you want to show him your gratitude and appreciation as well, you can do so by giving the video a like. Also, leave a comment with your question or suggestion and we'll get to it as soon as we can. Now, going back to Stoplight, the visual designer tool, the interactive documentation, and the instant mock servers are all part of the free plan. So go ahead, give it a try, and start building. I've added a few important links in the YouTube description, so make sure to check that out. And by the way, the next episode in the series will be about designing all types of diagrams using Lucid Chart. And you don't wanna miss that, so make sure to hit the subscribe button. And that was it for today. See you guys in the next time. Peace out.